know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. What's up, Square Pit Brigade? Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I really mean it. We got a special guest, special show. Um, Harry, you ready to rock and roll? Absolutely, Dante. I'm, I'm having a tough time keeping these gators down, but other than that, I'm good to go. It's ready to go. Uh, I want to introduce my guest. Um, Andre is blowing up and he's writing and doing all kinds of stuff. He's not going to be on today, uh, but check him out on Andre D. Thompson on all his social media, whatever. And I want to introduce my guest. This dude's a really good friend of mine. Um, we've been banging the clubs for many years now. Uh, writer of The Daily Show on The Daily Show, uh, it's Comedy Central. Um, he has a new po podcast called The Paul Mercurio Show. Am I right about that, Paul? Yeah, I named it myself, man. All right, we, all right, all right. It's so we, cool. Yeah, we workshopped the title for like six months, and that's what we came up with. And that's what so. you came up with, you. your <laughs> name and show. It's good to see you. Hey, man, um, it's great to see you. Same miss, here, man. I miss seeing that being with you in the clubs and all this craziness like it's so great to see you though man yeah it's good how did you how'd you hold up with all the all the uh end of the world shit well i got covid i got really COVID. yeah and i got it in florida performing in a club down there in palm beach they man. uh they didn't who'd, wanna... have, who'd have thought that yeah <laughs> unbelievable they didn't want to they, didn't, they weren't making anybody wear masks in the town right so like yeah. if i dropped you from another planet you wouldn't know that there was a pandemic Right. And then and people are coming up to me like, you don't need a mask. It's all the whole thing's a hoax. And these are like like people that look normal. This isn't like the crazy cat lady down the street from you. OK. Yeah. yeah. And, and so the club wasn't making anybody wear masks at the table. They were, but they were like, oh, yeah, they have to wear masks when they go to the bathroom. Like, that's like five minutes out of the night. Like, right. Right. The night. Right. Just laughing and spitting and whatever. And I and so uh, I nice that they had their Sunday. science together. For that, that? You know, like, nice that they had the science together for that. Like, ah, yeah, they'll just do it in the bathroom. No yeah, big deal. Exactly. We got it. I think, I we think got they you. basically they basically flunked science. They did everything backwards, right? And then they were like, "Oh, we clean the club every night. We have somebody come in." And it's like I said, like you just take your money and flush it down the toilet because you're letting people come in and sit at the table for an hour and a half and spit flying out of their mouth. And also, it was you're like, supposed to clean the club every night. Well, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> not these, yeah. Yeah. that's the only upside to covid for this club was that they finally cleaned it and uh, no it's a really nice club and, and that's also like, why danger feels closed because yeah. they had to clean it <laughs> yeah, exactly. they had the option they could have stayed open right. they went you can clean this like, and they went i gotta nah. clean this i'm out man i'm yeah. out fuck this Chari chario was like you don't need to clean anything so, <laughs> i was on stage at danger feels once and that son of a bitch this guy chario for anybody listening is this old greek waiter at Dangerfields, and they all dress in these little short red jackets, like a bad lounge in Vegas. Still, uh, uh, he's like, and he would like just he come out. Remember, like with food, right? And yeah. The tables right in front, and it'd be like 
French fries overflow in the plate. And he'd just uh-huh. be like, and you're like, so then I was, uh, I told the cab driver, and it's like, boom, here you go, ride the burger. Hey, ride the thing. <laughs> and, and literally a fry flipped off the plate and landed on my foot while I was on stage. Yeah, Sario is a fucking nightmare. Oh he is a fucking God. nightmare. Oh. He, had, he had cancer. I don't know if he made it. We don't know oh. yet. Nobody oh. will never know because the club is closed now. Oh, so Jesus. So we'll never know. The club gave him cancer, I'm sure. Like, uh, so then I got COVID and then I start going to the doctor and I had the short, I didn't have like the breathing thing, but I lost my taste and smell and uh, I got inflammation. And I was really tired. And, and then the doctors don't know anything. And you could like, you go and you'd say like, uh, yeah, I got the, this, I got the shortness of breath. I did this, I got the can't taste smell. And, and you could say anything. Like you'd be like uh, every Tuesday frogs crawl out of my ass. Yeah. Yeah. We've heard that. Right? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and then they like, and then I, and then you go, how come? And they go, we don't know. Uh, we, we, we don't, there's not enough. So, oh, so you um, got it early. You got it really early on. Yeah. I got it last June, and okay. I'm, but I'm still tired from it. And I had like inflammation in my elbows and stuff like that. And, uh, mm. and then, and then like you have these friends that like think they're helping you when you get sick and they're like, Oh, you got it. Okay. No, worry, you'll be fine. He goes, well, although I know a guy and he got it. And then like a month later, uh, they found a blood clot in his leg and they almost had to remove his leg. I'm like, are you trying to help me right now? Like- <laughs> that's that's like every time I ride, I, I got I bought a new bike. I bought a new motorcycle. I bought a new Ducati. Right. right. And and every time I go, they go, yeah. Oh, man, it's a beautiful bike. But I know this guy got he hit a bump and he flew in the overpass and cut his head off. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks exactly. for that. I, I, I appreciate you so much. Exactly. Um, you start looking through your pants for the receipt for the bike so you can take it back. It's like, yeah. You know, and the yeah. guy kept going on. I know another guy had uh, yeah, lost his sense of taste. Uh, uh, they said, he, uh, he, it's been over a year. He can't taste anything. I'm like, you're fucking killing me. Just leave me alone, right? So it just became that. And then, you know, I was like, did you get your taste back? Yeah, I don't know. I did. I got my taste back. But if I get really tired, then I lose my sense of taste. It's wow. Like, I'm, like, and I'm still, I don't still don't have my stamina back yet. Like, I, you know, like if I yeah. go to the gym a couple of days back to back or whatever, I'm doing a lot of stuff, then I don't, uh, and 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 then like I don't know what you, what were you doing during COVID, but I was like, I was just losing my mind. Like I like I literally I was doing some work uh, in my house, and I had to order some stuff on Amazon, like screws, like certain like stainless steel screws that I needed, yeah, and yeah. I was tracking the package of screws. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bored I was. I was like, are they here yet? I'm like, oh Jesus Christ! Well, you I know, the because you know I still got I you know. You know, I had a son. I t- you you know, I had a son, but I was, um, you know, working with the phone company. I still I got three more years before I can. I don't want to blow my pension. So yeah. I got yeah. three more years to do. And uh, and so, I, you know, phone company is essential. Hmm. Um, I don't know how much I'm a, I'm essential. What a shit worker I am. But <laughs> but I mean, as as it goes, we're all essential so i worked right through it i mean the first when the quarantine hit i had i had a video up that i that i put up on social media where it was like the first day where everybody was locked down and i was on 40 47 i was on on 7th avenue 47 it was just pigeons and and nobody there like on noon it was just like a fucking ghost town so i feel like i felt like i am legend you know, so <laughs> just you and a dog, right? Me and a deer <laughs> and a lion. So, so, but I mean, you know, so I worked all through it. So I didn't really, you know, I mean, I didn't really have that thing. It was just, but it was nice because my son is so young and it was good that I could be home with him, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that's something that we don't really get to do, but, um, Teach him, teach him porn, how to find good porn. Stuff yeah, like I was. That. At, well, he's not there yet, but he is. He is jumping out of the playpen like, like the, like uh, without a problem. Like the cops are chasing after him, so it's fine. He'll, he'll be fine. So did you, you didn't get COVID, did you? Um, I think I had it. Uh, in in like uh, you know Chris Cotton, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I you know he passed away, but I think they're thinking now that he got it, that he had it. Now that, that's what took him out you know and uh so i had the i had the dry cough and the shortness of breath and stuff but i you know it was like but you january didn't go get tested you january didn't get tested. i got tested and i had the antibodies but uh, uh i you know i don't know when or 
you uh, know oh so i mean you I didn't, did have it at some point you yeah, just I, didn't have a rough, I didn't have a real rough time no i mean i remember the dry cough mm -hmm. early on but it was what people weren't even really talking about covid then you know like january and stuff so you know well, whatever it just it is what it is i mean yeah. you know it's good to see things coming back so we'll see you back out again How's yeah your it is it is and it isn't like i'm kind of i'm kind of I don't I'm not missing interacting with people because I just get such assholes out there. But I yeah, yeah I, you don't realize how nice it is not to talk to people sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, from talking from my act, like a lot of my act is just about how I'm constantly getting in confrontations with people because I think I'm going to change the world. But I was I, I went to go visit my mother up in Rhode Island and then she wanted some coffee. So I was I would go through the drive through and bring her some coffee. And I, this is the and this is when I realized I don't think I'm ready to go back. Because the guy goes, uh, yeah. what do you what do you want? I go, I want a two two muffin, two cranberry muffins, and a and a coffee. He goes, you want a hot coffee or ice coffee? I go, hot coffee. He goes, okay, uh, two blueberry muffins and a nice coffee. I'm <laughs> like, no, two cranberry muffins and a, and a, and a hot coffee. He goes, okay, you want anything in the coffee? He goes, yeah, I'd like some cream or half and half. He goes, okay. Uh, hot coffee and two cranberry muffins. Uh, coffee's black, right? I go, no, cream. <laughs> he goes, well, you want cream or half and half? I go, half and half or cream. He goes, you want it in the coffee or on the side? I, he goes, I go, in your coffee. And then he goes, all right, so it's iced coffee. I go, no, it's hot coffee. He goes, do you want anything in it? I go, yes. And I went, anything that's white. I want anything that's white in the coffee, right? And as I'm saying that, I'm like, please don't have the guy be black. And I go around the corner of the window and he's fucking black. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. And I'm like, I'm not ready to go back. I can't yeah. go back. But. I'm not going to miss the mask because I, I, I just realized yeah. now how much people have been shitting, pissing, spitting polio and 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 rickets <laughs> on us all these years yeah. that we never even that we were just breathing in all kinds yeah. of syphilis and gonorrhea. gonorrhea so i mean i'm yeah. not i'm not i'm not how's the how's the marriage going how, how did that happen with the marriage and and your lady and the and your son how's your son my son's good he's getting big and he's uh how he old is he now it. uh he's 16 and he's mm -hmm. like you know got like you know he got it but like it came and went like that and yeah. uh and he's got a girlfriend and we nice. think well it's a girl he keeps bringing her name up you know i'm gonna go see so and man i'm gonna go see so and so Mm -hmm. and, and it started out like, I'm going to go see, uh, I'm going to go hang out with like uh, Olivia, John and Maddie. And then it was like, I'm going to hang out with Olivia and Maddie. Then it was like, mm -hmm. when I'm, I'm like, you date Maddie. He goes, no, I'm not. I, I don't want to talk about it. I'm like, you're, 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 you're dating. And he wouldn't. And he did exactly what I did as a kid. Like he totally got defensive. But it's mm -hmm. uh, it's cool to kind of see him in that mode, you know. And uh, my wife and I have been together since high school. So yeah. Yeah. we've known each other a long time. So we had some fights. I had I had to stay in the bedroom for two weeks because I had COVID and eat off paper plates. And uh, yeah. and uh, my wife is like very passive and and doesn't like to kind of she'll she'll like let people roll over her a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I've been my whole life with her. I've been trying to get her to be like more like you know assertive because I say because if I drop dead tomorrow, you don't yeah. want you know like you you don't want the you know, you don't want the healthcare company just trying to fuck you on yeah, something, yeah. right? Yeah. And we, and so I wish she would be more assertive on things and, uh, and even sex. Like I always have to initiate sex. Right. Right. That's uh, kind of sucks. Well, I'm Sometimes. Italian. So we don't, it's all on the sleeve, right? I wear it. She's a wasp, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. So they mm -hmm. don't, there's not a lot of emotion there. It's just a lot of like, they keep it inside. Right. Right. And then they like drink martinis and get divorced. Like that's their thing. <laughs> So it's like, it's like, there's this, there's this yin and yang, you know? And um, so we, you know, it, well, we feed off each other, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now let me ask you this because, because you've been on the show before and, and, and one of the things about if for the, for the listeners who don't remember, or we don't know the episode, but go through the episodes, Paul's on there. And um, last time you were on, you talked a lot about your mom mm. and how your mom owned the furniture store. And she was just very, just dope, like very aggressive and, and yeah. kind of making things. Wait, was your dad around too? I know your dad passed away, I think. Yeah, my was dad it? was around, but my dad was really passive because my mother just like sucked all the oxygen out of the room, which she still does. She's 93. <laughs> we just actually closed her store a month ago. Wow. Because she had to finally close it, although she didn't want to close it. Mm -hmm. And it was a this complete nightmare because she wouldn't listen. And she treated us like we were, my brother and I helped her do it. Like we were 11 years old. She had to mm -hmm. go through every single piece of paper herself. Mm -hmm. Every right. piece, like she would not let us throw anything out. And if you did, 
you had to do it like, you know that scene in Godfather where the De Niro plays the young uh, Vito and he sh- kills the guy and it shoots him in the cheek and it's in the staircase. Then he goes yeah, yeah, uh, up to the yeah. roof of the building and he busts up the gun and he shoves it into yeah, different yeah. pipes. Yeah, yeah. That's how you have to throw away my mother's <laughs> shit. Huh. I swear to God, because what happens is like you'll She'll say, find it. She, yeah. So like you, what you have to do is like you have to rip it up in like seven and pieces. Spread the pieces and all over. Spread the pieces because she'll get all the pieces if they're together and she'll fucking tape it back together again. Sorry, I'm getting pissed off already. Yeah, yeah. And uh and so and, and that, she'll tape it, she'll tape it back together. Oh, she'll tape it back together. And this isn't like this isn't some like important this is like this is like an article about about furniture from 1986. Like, uh, I'm not yeah. kidding you, right? Shit that goes back. She's like a walk-in library with dust. Like it's ridiculous, right? right? And so she so she was the dominant one, and my father was passive and too passive. I think, you know, and looking back now, my brother and my sister and I wish like my mother could be really hard on us. It made you feel guilty if you didn't work in the store, all that stuff. Mm. And I think my father should have sort of defended us more and, you right. know, cause he was only the one, he was the only one that could, but I think he was just so beaten down. It was like, you know, he'd just have a beer and he goes, just do whatever she wants. It's easier. Right. right. I think that was his whole right, life. Right. 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 And, it, uh, it's interesting. Cause I always, you know, you find a lot of times, a lot of times, I've, you know, we've been doing the show a long time and I'm due to consultations and stuff. Mm. And what you, what you find moreover than not is guys married and mother. Do you know what I mean? Like they marry the oh, woman man. that they that their mother is. It's because mm-hmm. there's such a there's such a normalization of of who. So, you know, I always say, you know, when you're a kid, you watch, you look at you, the, your mother and your father are the two uh, representations of masculinity or what a man is and what a fem- right. of, of, a woman is. And so you find a lot of times who you'll you'll, you'll see people who will marry their mother or marry somebody who's very similar to like and you it's weird to me that you 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 said that your wife is so passive i married and- my i married my father mm. okay yeah yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm serious like yeah yeah she my my wife loved my father my father was like so chill and she loved to just talk to him and so a lot of the traits of my father i see in my wife mm-hmm. and vice versa and then my mother i think i'm more like my mother Right. Uh, except I'm not as big an asshole. And right. uh, and and she and she's like and she's 93. And right. She's like 100 percent like she will yeah. not go down. I mean, we try yeah. everything like bad cheese. <laughs> you tried to give her pillows. COVID. <laughs> yeah. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Her Accidentally, the pillow no slips onto her face and I hold it for a while. No, nope, she bounces right back up. You pull it away and go, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, come on. You die old Italian lady. And um, but, you know, it's like. I think your childhood informs a lot of stuff. You know, um, her parents came here from Italy. She was the only girl in an all male family with brothers. You know how the Italians are very patriarchal. And she um, and her father died at 42 when she was just 13, 14 years old. And her mother became epileptic. And so like at 16, she was was going to high school and being a seamstress and then calling home and cooking and cleaning for these boys. And she kind of got screwed out of a childhood right. and had to work. And she kind of did that to us. Yeah. Like she used to say, like, I had to work. You have to work. And uh, and it's like, you know, and I and I try to instill that in my son. But I, I try to I'm trying to break the cycle because I can find I can be like my mother sometimes. and like, be busy, be busy. Why are you sitting around? You know, and yeah. I don't want to be that person. But like my wife is definitely more like my father. And my, it drives me crazy sometimes with my wife. Like, that's the thing. Like that she won't like sometimes like. I got to take over something or do something that she should be doing. And then, and then she goes, well, you just don't give me a chance. I go, no, like I gave you three weeks and you're not doing it. And then it turns into this fight. And then I'm like the bad guy. And so then I go out and bang a hooker. It's usually the best way to kind of solve all the problems. That's a good solution. That's a good solution. I mean, you kill her afterwards, right? Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah. I mean, you can, then, then yeah. it doesn't count then. Well, there are um, times, they're, they're all over the place. It's not like you're going to be missing her. You know what I'm saying? I just go pick up another one. I just go over to 12th Avenue and I'm good. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting. You know, I never said that to anybody before. So I'm glad you raised that about my, my wife. I did marry my father. It's really yeah. interesting. You know, well, yeah, sometimes you can, it, there's two ways to break any sort of cycle when you deal with something that's so extreme. You can either, I mean, it's the same thing with abuse, like physical abuse or whatever. You can go and do the exact same thing 
or the exact or you opposite. Go the exact yeah. opposite. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm I'm the exact opposite. There's just so much drama in my family that I went the exact opposite. You Harry, do to, tell. Yeah. yeah. Were your parents divorced or did they? Stay uh, they got divorced, but like way too late. They should have gotten divorced much much <laughs> yeah. earlier. Yeah. Would have saved. I mean, it was the only divorce that everyone, all three of the brothers, were like, "Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense." <laughs> what What took you so long? Yeah. Or like we knew this was finished a while ago. Yeah. yeah. Harry's Harry's bringing lawyers in like uh, you, I don't know if you met uh, <laughs> yeah, Weinstein, right. Weinstein and right. Bacala. Right. Right. <laughs> hey, Dad, I know we're going to go to the Knicks game this afternoon, but uh, maybe we should swing by. There's a good lawyer right over here just across the yeah. street from the garden and we could pop in. And I, I always thought that my parents should have gotten divorced, but that generation didn't divorce. They don't do it. They didn't do it. Now, I know your parents may be older, or younger than mine, but they didn't do it. But they would. I remember one time I was little and I went, I was, they were really yelling and I was, it was really bumming me out. And I was, went to my sister and I go, oh, mommy, daddy, going to get divorced. And I can't remember what my sister said, uh, but she was, cause she was smoking crack. And uh, no. no, but I really thought they were going to get divorced. And then later in looking back on it now, it's just like my father just seemed so toward the end of his life, just not happy. And they were just, all we did was work. It was all about the store. It was just too much. It was just too much. But um, do you do you find you're more like your mother or your father, Harry? Uh, I mean, I'm, it, they're both so crazy. I'm like, neither. Like I'm literally like neither. Like oh, no, father. you know what? Yeah, I ha- here's the negativity I got from my dad for a long time. And I just had to start breaking this. I was Mr. Negativity because that was what my dad was. So I would always see the most negative part of any possibility. Like, oh. what's the most negative outcome that could happen here if something doesn't go right? Right. And I, yeah, you're right, Dante. I am like my dad. Yeah, I, I, you I mean, gotta ask me. We've been married for eight years that's now, true. so yeah, so. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I wasn't. I really thought I wasn't like because that. But that's the only thing I think I inherited from him is that aspect of it. Because one time, I, I mean, he's going through some shit now, and I go, I'm trying. He's telling me the story of the shit that's going down. My brother fucked something up or whatever, and it's a bad situation. And I, and you know, he's telling me the story. I go, Hey, Dad, that's that's terrible. I'm sorry. He goes, It's worse than terrible. <laughs> like what? And no well, matter he, what, are you it, Jewish? Are you no? Jewish? He's Armenian. My oh, dad's well, Armenian. Sounds very Jewish. That yeah, but you thought. know that's that. You know, Paul, that that immigrant culture. Yes, is is about it's about survival. Yeah. It's not about self fulfilling happiness. Yeah. Of fulfilling, right. when you was, know. When I was a kid, I think we had some assignment to ask our parents or something what their dream was when they were a little kid or whatever. <laughs> dream, and, yeah, dream. <laughs> dream. What are you talking dream. about? Right. I had when, no I, dream. when I told my father I dreamt, he beat me with a stick. We don't dream in this family. Yeah. I kept pestering him. I go, you must have wanted to do something. He goes, listen, I had a dream about eating a sandwich. Leave me alone. <laughs> and that was the end of it. Uh. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny because when Harry tells that story about terrible, it's yeah. worse than terrible. The the pretext for that was that Harry was like, you know what I'm going to do? No matter how negative he is, I'm just going <laughs> right. to confirm it right. so that he doesn't go on. You know, I mean, uh, it's, it's, this thing is terrible. They're terrible. He goes, you know, that, 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 sounds, that sounds horrible. It sounds terrible, Dad. It really does sound ter- terrible. Terrible. You don't know what terrible is. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just, I'll like, give you terrible. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, it, I mean, that's, that's horrible. It's worse than horrible. <laughs> worse horrible than horrible. Are you the kidding? To describe it. <laughs> Here, let me show you some pictures. This is horrible. Yeah. Growing up <laughs> like this, we he couldn't afford bread. <laughs> he called me up one time. He goes, uh, listen, your grandfather is dying. <laughs> he's not well and that was 15 years ago I'm, I'm standing like 20 feet from the old man he's watching soccer in the other room just like what are you doing so i had to learn how to stop like whatever you know, it's he- funny funny is that harry goes oh no i'm not like my dad at all yeah. and and i'm like are you fucking kidding me right, right. I, forgot about Whenever, that. I mean we've had a lot of you know different transitions to the show and stuff yeah. like that oh, and harry will, harry will always start he says listen uh I don't want to be the negative guy, but and then he <laughs> then he spews some negative uh, shit, negative a half hour negative shit. And then he goes, oh, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to be practical. And I go, none of that is practical. Oh, That's man. all just negative. But you, you have these patterns. You get in these patterns and then you don't really you're not aware of it. And then you you know, so it's interesting when you're talking about like, I'm trying to break the cycle. I'm trying to, you know, but you got to be aware of it. 
we first. used to like we used to it, my mother's so psychotic like we used to my brother and i like on a saturday like we always had to work and deliver furniture like on a saturday and a sunday on like christmas eve because people needed to have their yeah, yeah. new <laughs> fucking ugly sofa that they could die in <laughs> and 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 my and so some saturdays like you know we couldn't go out and hang out and play with our friends because we had to work in the store and she'd go run an errand and she caught us, she would catch, she caught us a couple of times, like just standing around in the store, just standing in the store. Now, these are two young guys like that should be out playing with their friends. How old? Right? How old? Um, I, I was uh, probably 14. My brother's wow. like 19. Yeah. So like, and he go, she goes, she comes in the store, like fucking just raging going, what are you doing standing around? If you stand around and they see you standing around, they think there's no business to be had and there's something wrong with the store. Keep busy. Keep it. Here, and she'd throw a rag at us. Dust. Just dust. I'm like, I dust so much, I fucking burn the hole in the glass. Where? What are you talking about? Right? And, I, and to this day, I have trouble. My wife tells me, reminds me of just... Letting somebody just, sit still. Yeah, just... just my wife says, you, you just be. Just be. Just let it... Just... just because there's that thing, you know, when that gets ingrained, you're really young, like you got to keep busy, you got to keep busy. And that, I find that sometimes, like if I come in and this house and my son's like watching TV, or whatever, and it's a nice day, oh, part of me is like, you, you know, sometimes I will say go out, it's a nice day. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or if he's just sitting around like on his phone, yeah. what are you I doing? Feel, I feel, what, are you, what are you doing? Dust! Right? And he's like, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I said a PTSD, I had a flashback. To 14. <laughs> um, and so I find I have to stop myself from that, you know? Yeah, I had, I had a situation. My dad was so caustic with like customer service people or somebody. If he thought he was so, uh, he had like a phobia that people were making fun of him because he was an immigrant, <laughs> basically. Like, anything. no, they were just making fun of him because he was so fucking negative. That's right, why. no <laughs> doubt. But in his head, it was always like, oh, because I don't speak the language like you. you like, you know, he wouldn't take the number at the deli counter or somebody messed up and they help somebody else and then that became a thing of like him getting into a public shouting match <laughs> and i would be so embarrassed by that and i was just like as a grown-up up, up until a couple of years ago if i went into a restaurant and they brought me the wrong food i would just eat the food i go i'm not even you went the other way yeah i went the complete <laughs> other way like i don't want no conversation with nobody right i didn't right. Even want to talk to anybody yeah i <laughs> just fucking <laughs> Yeah. Weird that I went into comedy, but I mean that was the only time I would talk to people because that that's how he was. And I just well, I'm like it. your father, but I do it because I think that people need to say something when there's bag. But I like it, and I and I, I said at the beginning, I got a ton of stories, but like, and I've done it in front of my son, and my wife got really mad at me, and like, I think my son is doing what you're doing because he just yeah. like he's just like you know. You don't want none of the smoke. No, you, you know, you know what I mean. They they bring him water and just pour it in his lap. He's like, "Fuck it, I'll take it that way. I'll just suck on my pants." My you dad know? would be driving after the thing, still having the fight, like talking to himself, like, "You think yeah. you're some dummy? You think yeah. you think you're messing with?" Yeah, exactly. You think I just got off the boat and yeah, I go, "Hey, yeah. dad, what are you talking about? Nothing, nothing. Don't worry about it." <laughs> I remember we, we his dad came to see uh came to see Harry That's at right. Caroline's. And they, you know, how the Carolines had the mugs. And he was like, this, this, this mug is, is eight dollars for this mug. This for mug coffee. is this is this is what he say? Like for coffee. Too he's much. like too much for coffee. And for, then he stole the mug. He stole the mug. <laughs> so he could get his money's worth. <laughs> I'm gonna awesome. pay that much. I'm getting something. Uh, is he still alive? You should he's, hang out with yeah, my mother. Alive oh, and well. Jesus. My mother's worse. And here's the problem. My mother's a fucking maniac. So that's why I'm hanging out with my dad. That's why I'm staying with my dad at the moment. <laughs> he's I get the same place. one. He's the yeah, same he's one. The, he's the good How's one. How's your mom a maniac? In what way? Uh, she was obsessive, compulsive, uh, like had germophobia, cleaning, constantly screaming at people. Harry um, still hasn't got any any uh, any nose hair from all the bleach. She's oh Latino God, too, yeah. so it's just bleach scrubbing the place with bleach. Uh, my mother's the opposite. It's like it's like a hoarder show. My mother's house oh, is Jesus. like you go in there and there's a 50 50 chance you come out, period. Like they just don't find you. Like yeah. there's and she busts our balls like you don't know what I have hidden here. I get stuff hidden everywhere. The, hundred dollar bills you're gonna have to go through every sheet of paper and i'm like i'm gonna burn this fucking house down when you, you die keep you that like, hundred yeah exactly. <laughs> keep that fucking hundo exactly i actually heard her say one time um she, my brother was they, they got in a fight and whatever and i think you know because i was younger i don't know maybe i was the baby and i was getting favoritism and he said my brother said to my mother who do you love more 
uh, me or Polly, and my mother goes, I don't think about things like that as long as I have the store. That's from my mother. <laughs> that was, that was so close to the right answer. Like, yeah, hey, yeah, I can't yeah. pick, and, I can't pick between thing. you because I'm focused on the business. This, yeah. is, this is why you're a comic. That exactly. was a great fucking misdirection. Yeah, She's exactly. like, I don't, I don't even think I love you. Mm, the store. Right, yeah. And it wasn't like she had to like ruminate over it. It was no, like, was right. It? Like, he, he finished she had the thought about right it right out of her mouth. So, you know, no, it was like, and he was, and I think my brother is like to this day scarred. Like he just doesn't know how to deal with that, right? And uh, and so it just, yeah. My mother's got some you deal of the with angers. it by going. She's an asshole. I don't give a fuck what she thinks anymore, yeah. which is how I deal with my mom. Yeah, mom. So my mom told me instead of doing comedy, she would rather I sell hot dogs for a living. <laughs> by the way, I had graduated from college. I had a degree. I was working at the time. Yeah. But the notion that I had even like the inkling of a dream was too much right. for her for some reason. Yeah, but she did say you need to have your, your dick sucked though. She, she did, did say that. Yeah, that you got to oh. find a girl who who will uh who will suck you like dick, you right? like it, you like yeah. you like your dick sucked. You have to yeah. get a girl, nice Latino girl to suck your dick. You like yeah. you like your dick suck. <laughs> I think that was her way of trying to get steer me away from white women though. See, that was still selfish. <laughs> that was still selfish. I think she made she, that sacrifice. She's apparently convinced herself that white women don't suck dick, huh? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. She's just listen. She's just trying to uh, lobby for her group, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and, and, and trust me, she's not a good lobby. Like she's no. not. She's not a, not representative. a good representative. In fact, I don't know. It's only till now, Harry, that you kind of got your your head together. I don't remember you dating Spanish girls at all. Jesus, like <laughs> she I mean, scared Harry away yeah. from yeah. Latino women. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe subconsciously anything that would have made her remotely happy. I try to stay away from like he could be in bed with a woman about the fucker and then you bring windex in and you just his dick goes yeah. soft because he just thinks of go. his mother clean oh man man she's what? off the hook she's off the hook it's just what's interesting though he, i mean you know like I, I was always i was looking forward to you coming on the show because you really are uh like your marriage and stuff you're like a traditional kind of what we would consider traditional kind of marriage like you're the guy like paul is such a guy guy right and and he don't he very dif very distinct about what his role is and and how you see your marriage and what and not not in a dickhead way but it's a just traditional sort of it's very clear right but it's you know it's interesting as we talk about this but i grew up in a very untraditional family where the roles were reversed and my mother was the the dominant one and my father was more submissive and i'm not oh. saying my wife's submissive but like i I'm saying that you kind of already said that, though, but, <laughs> but, I, but, right. I wish, but I wish she wouldn't be, like I wish she wouldn't be because stuff falls in my lap that I don't I don't think I should have to deal with. Mm -hmm. But she won't do it. And then right. and then she's just, you know, like I said about sex, like we have it when I bring it up. But like, right. if I don't bring it up, it's like, oh, it's Christmas. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, like oatmeal. Do we have any oatmeal in the closet? <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a whole there's a whole that of it you you want oatmeal because right. i it's weird because i fucked her in a tub of oatmeal once and uh <laughs> it was very messy but um like no like i so i don't feel like i just feel like i am who i am and you're right like i it's sort of all out there yeah but i wouldn't i'm not saying a woman should be in the no, no I, and that's what i mean it's traditional but it's not dickhead you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, it's yeah. you know it's just kind of it is like we you know i'll give you a little background it's like since i mean we've been doing the show for like eight well, it's almost nine year now right yeah, i think we're year nine well year nine and yeah. and so you know with everything being more progressive in terms of uh, you know gender fluidity and stuff and we've had gay and lesbian and mm -hmm. trans people on the show and stuff and so you wonder you you know that these principles work you know in the perspective of a of a traditionally gender traditionally thing but you know these all these other things out and so we kind of changed the the model to almost to submissive and and dominant as opposed to masculine and feminine you know right, right. which and is I, interesting because you're talking about that in, in terms of the, in terms of your parents even in a sense that your mother was was well, my mother dominant. was like you know if you want to just put it differently like it, in, a, in a traditional sense if I put on a list, of, I didn't. If I didn't put their names, I just put 
A and B, and I put a list of personality traits of A mm-hmm. and a list of personality traits B, you would think the list of personality traits for my mother, that that was the father. Right. And, right. and you know what I mean? It just completely. Now, my father was, you know, he was a guy and like, you know, if I, yeah. you know, too, he, you know, I fuck around. He grabbed me by the shirt. His hands were like the size of, you know, yeah, yeah. Of a baseball bat, of a, a baseball glove. And, you know, and I got, you know, I got hit. That's that happened, too, when I was a kid. Yeah. And so like, but but yeah, I think that um, I look, I mean, but I also think a lot of this stuff is taboo on some level. It, and if you talk about it, you know, you talked about it's gay, straight, gender, uh, uh, fluidity. And, you know, I do think that there's a tendency to kind of be afraid to talk about some stuff, especially if you're straight and white because you're worried about offending now. But like I was doing my uh, the one man show I had off Broadway and, yeah, um, yeah. and I was bringing people on stage and we were sort of just t- people telling stories. And I talked to a lot of gay people. And they want to be talked to, not like they're broken, but that yeah. just they have in the beginning and they have stories. Like I asked it to this one guy, he was like in his late twenties. I go, when did you come out? He goes, I was like say 16, 17. And his mother was with him on stage. I go, how did your mother react? He goes, I'm glad you asked me that. Cause nobody ever asked me that. And I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. all right. And I'm not trying to, I'm not making fun yeah, of you. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah. Cause I don't know what it's like to be in that moment. Right. And I'm just a naturally curious person. He goes, well, it was really weird. I go, why she got upset. He goes, no, actually she said, um, I have to go to work in the morning. Why are you telling me this at 1030 at night? Like that was a whole reaction <laughs> to him coming out, which was like, it, you know, and I loved it because it sort of, it took away the sort of the taboo nature of talking of a straight guy, talking to a gay guy about being gay and whatever. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you know, my mother's generation, she doesn't get that. She goes, she goes to me the other day. She goes, what do you think of those men that wear dresses? And she made this face like she just, <laughs> like ate a horse's ass like it was just yeah, yeah. and i'm like man i don't even want to get into it yeah, yeah. like you know, i mean they, my father was a man's man she kept calling my father a man her father my mm-hmm. father she said was a man's man and he would come home and he'd you know he'd bring us oranges when we were kids we didn't have a lot of money so i do think that i do think those roles whatever they are as long as they're defined i think helps the kid you know what i mean yeah. like even and i so i have a view of women i think that for people that might actually surprised people because i i saw my mother in this role and still do like she can be emasculating you know? yeah man. right you know? right and now how does that how does that lead to the thing where you talk about you want your woman your your wife to be more assertive you know what i mean um i i it like and that the, the I, I get how you want you know you don't want to be i mean you've been married how long now uh, 25, 26 years. 20 okay. years yeah. And so, I mean, like there's, you want that defined because you want some of the burden of it off of you because there's things that she should take into consideration. But I will say I, I, there was a guy that I was counseling at one time and he, he had this, he had this, he was in this really abusive relationship, which is interesting. The girl, because the girl was hideous like really hit like he kept saying my girl my girl my girl and then him, him and i went out on a double date and his girl was so <laughs> he, like so i mean what was I, he getting out of it then I, I, he was just a very you know like his mother was 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 emasculating and just very but also passive aggressive and just and so he just liked the fact that he was validated by having a girl just just somebody liked him You know, Uh, and the girl was like she was man like I I, we actually this was before I did comedy and we went to the comic strip and I was with my girl at the time and I could not stop looking at her. She was so hideous like i when, so why when, so you gonna give yourself nightmares later like you like, just burn it into your brain <laughs> well like i i would like my girl at the time was elbowing me stop staring and i was like i can't i can't <laughs> stop looking it's right like a car accident you can't you can't look away and she and and he was he he got engaged to her and every other week she would hit him in the chest with the ring fuck you take oh this piece God. of shit like and then so then he he uh, do I? It was funny because this was before the podcast, before I was doing consultations. I was giving advice, like I've always been given that kind of advice. Right. And he finally broke up with her, and he got and it was this girl who um, 
really shy dude. We we used to go to this Dominican spot on 125th Street in Harlem. Mm -hmm. And there was this girl. She was smoking hot, like hazel eyes. Body was crazy. She had just off the boat, just from Dominican Republic, right? He goes, uh, he, 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 he was like, hi, hi, you know, speaking, but he never could stand him. And there was this Cuban guy, the Cuban guy who actually went to the Olympics in boxing and worked at the phone company. He went to the year, he went the year that Sugar Ray Leonard and Howard Davis and those guys went. Um, did, he, did he use that girl's face as a, as a punching uh, bag? Oh, well, he, well, he was a guy who was like, he used to go, he, yo, you got to talk to girls. You got to, he was like real extra. Yeah. So he asked because he was, he didn't speak any Spanish. He asked the guy to hook him up, but uh, he went to the, he went to the girl, the Dominican girl, and he's his his Spanish was so broken that she didn't even know what he said. But he like so he, so he was so he hooked her up. He he was like you know this guy my friend my friend he wanted to talk to you and right he it was just like yeah. insane. And then <laughs> and then he goes so his name was Julio Matos and I go I go to the to to my buddy that was working with me in the phone company. I go listen you have to ask her out today if he hooked her hooked you up yesterday you have to go out and ask and pursue this today and he didn't understand why and what i was saying is i said look if this guy gave the okay that you like you, he like you like him do you like him and he's coming he really likes he wants to ask you out and then you come in the store and you just buy your fucking oatmeal and keep going. Right. I go, women don't deal with the rejection. Well, right. so it's almost like I'm looking forward to this guy coming to, to ask me out. And then he doesn't ask me out. And then days go by because he's scared. And then then she starts to resent you because she was into it and she wanted you to ask her out. And then you didn't. And now she feels like you like almost like you tricked her, you know, like yeah. you, you and I and I was like, you have to ask her out today. And so he goes in the restaurant and he comes back out and he we're in the phone truck because we work together. We were partners in the phone truck and he comes back out. And I said, what happened? He goes, I went out. She was real busy. Uh, you know, I'll ask her another time. I go, no, you have to <laughs> ask her today. Right. And he goes, well, I'll, I'll ask her tomorrow. I go, I go, OK, so you could either go. Here's what you could do. You could either go back in and mm -hmm. ask her out to, to, to dinner or to a movie or whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Or you could come in the truck and fight me. <laughs> One <laughs> so he goes, awesome. he goes, what? I go, <laughs> you can either go in and ask her or come in the truck and fight me. And Harry, you know, he would fight him. You know, he would. <laughs> yeah. beat him. I know for sure. Senseless. I've seen it. Or you have to talk to Harry's father for like an hour and then kill yourself. He goes in and he yeah. asked the girl out. He goes, oh, my friend Julio, he came, he talked to you. And she was like, she kind of didn't speak a lot of English, but she was like, right. yeah, he came and talked to me, but I didn't even know what he said. Like, I had no idea what he was talking about. And then he goes, well, anyway, listen, I'd like to take you out. To, I'd like to take you out. And he was, she was like, oh yeah, you today, today. And he, she was like, he was like, no, no, uh, I get paid on Thursday. Well, Thursday, <laughs> Thursday. And she goes, okay. So he comes back in, he's grinning from ear to ear. I go, what happened? I go, isn't that better? She, she goes, well, she said, yes. I go, isn't that better than fighting me? That's so much better than fighting me. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> exactly. So he, fast forward, he ends up marrying this. Well, he, he, he they, they date, they get engaged. Um, the first fight that they had was because he washed his own dishes. She came to his apartment, cooked for him, and he went and washed his own dish out. And she said, you don't think I'm a woman enough to wash my man's dishes? Like, this was the fight, <laughs> what? right? What? This it's was like the fight. It was in, in like I was like, oh, this is a winner, right? You can't, right? But you can't win. Like you, you think like if a guy would be like, if a guy said that to her, you wash it because you're a woman, he get his dick cut off. But like that's insane. You don't it's think I'm woman enough to take care of my man, right? And but I was she like, came you know, from a, such a traditional background tra yeah, from the yeah. DR or whatever that that's what she had to do. Yeah, right. That, and maybe he was role. like, yeah, calling into question her cleaning skills. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, what do you think? You don't think I'm one? And then, so now, fast forward, he's married. He has his kid. He has his second kid, and she has moved in 
her mother, her uncle. She don't clean shit. She don't like. So he he was like, you know, she's so she's so sensitive. I just wish she was more assertive. And then he he ended up getting divorced from her. That he had to leave the house that for the family and move out and just right. insane. So it's it's. I always think of that when somebody goes, yeah, I wish my my wife was more assertive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I mean, I, I, I do. I mean, I do think that she could like, you know, whatever. And maybe that she might say, well, you know, you're so domineering at times that you don't, you know, and then she puts it back on me and then I uh, give her a backhand and uh, <laughs> no, nothing hard that leaves a mark. No. Um, and there's probably something to that because it takes two to tango, you know, right. sort of like if there's anything in the relationship that's not, you know, copacetic, it's usually both people's or so fault. So I'll own it. But like, and, uh, but like, here's the other thing. Like, I won't, I don't do dishes. I don't like, I don't do any of that. And it's not because I'm a guy and she's a woman, but it's more like sort of division of labor, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm out man. working and that sort of thing. And if I were home and she were working, I would do it. Right. Right. Um, but, um, but like, you know, I get, look, I get turned on if she initiates sex, like there's something, there's a turn on there. Right? Sure, sure, it Cause it makes you feel as though you want it. As yeah. opposed to she's just, yeah. oh, you want, you want, you, well, you want the oatmeal? Yeah, I'll, like, I'll I feel like I'm at, yeah, I feel like the same feeling that you get when you're asking your friends to move, you know, help you move. <laughs> it's like, you, you know, do you mind coming in? Hey, and I got this. Coming. It's just one love seat. And then, and, and, <laughs> and then I'll give you pizza and beer afterwards if Listen, you have sex. It's going to be over before you know it. It won't take long. If we, <laughs> just, won't, if we all work all, together, we'll get through right, this real exactly. quick. I use belts and blankets. It's all good, you know. So uh, how do you but, broach that? I mean, have you ever broached that about her? Yeah, not I, say, I, like, I wish you'd initiate more and then maybe she'll do it once and then it doesn't happen for two years. Like, right, right. Mm -hmm. just, I think some people get in their patterns and you can't, you know, um, and I and, you know, I don't know, maybe maybe, um, you know, maybe my libido is going more than she, hers. I don't know what it is. It's not like it's like, a, you know, going to cause a breakup of our marriage or anything. But like, I do think that. There's a it, would, it would definitely to, enhance the would. relationship. It yeah. would. And then, and also like, you know, but I do think there's a benefit that I married somebody like her because I don't think I, if I married me, we'd both be dead. Right. Like, we would, right. Both, right. We like, so she brings uh, a calmness and a, a very, she's very positive and I can be because not so much like your dad, but my mom is pretty jaded and negative, like Harry Harry's yeah. dad. And like, yeah. I think I got some of that. And right. um, like my mother was shitting on the idea of birthday parties the other day. She goes, I never <laughs> got a birthday party. Literally, like she's with me, my wife and my grandson. She goes, birthday parties. What do you guys think of birthday? What, what do you mean? What do we think of birthday parties? Like, that's like, what do you think of sunshine? What the fuck are you talking about? Well, I never had a birthday party. I go, are you actually shitting on people for having a birthday no, and then she backtracked, but she yeah. really was like, oh, no, yeah. I was really I was just saying it's nice that people. Throw. No, you are. You hate birthday parties. So it's like, how do you not let that affect you? But um, she's like birthday parties, cupcakes, puppies, Santa puppies, Claus. Fuck Santa them. Fuck you. <laughs> you got to clean up after them. You got puppies. I mean, there's shit all over the place. Right. You got to light the candle. You got to blow right. out the candle. What do I look like? A vacuum cleaner? I don't have this kind of time. Like, so, um, hey, listen, I got to jump, unfortunately, because I got to head over to the show. But okay. um, where are you working at tonight? Uh, I'm at the late show with, uh, with Colbert. Oh, right, with right. With Colbert, right. You're still doing Colbert. Awesome, yeah, we're man. Back with the well, we're back with the audiences now. Yeah. How's, and, it, uh, how's it feel to be back with that, with the audiences and stuff? It's good. It's like great energy. People are really psyched. It's definitely weird because like we hadn't been there in a while and then just, you know, without the audience for a long time. And then, yeah. so, but yeah, it's cool. And, um, but uh, yeah, and doing my podcast and I want to get you on the podcast. Yeah, so let's do it. Whatever you, you know, you got to. Yeah. Plug your stuff real quick. All your social uh, media, the everything. The podcast that... uh, is social media at Paul Mercurio, M E C U R I O one R in my name at Paul Mercurio. But the podcast, you know, kind of something for everybody. I got a whole different, you know, take on different tastes of guests. So I got it. It's all over the place. I have uh, Paul McCartney. And you said you have Paul McCartney, right? Can, yes. Can you Kevin... tell me how you? Can you real quick tell me how you got him? Yeah. On... I, uh, he, uh, Kevin Costner, Stephen Colbert, uh, Bill Burr. So real quick, um, I was uh, working at the Colbert Report at the time and um, he was the guest and he had just finished rehearsal and we were about to start taping and I'm walking through the hallway and in the hallway all alone is Paul McCartney, like just standing like he's waiting for a bus, like leaning mm. against the wall. 
And I'm like, oh, my God, it's fucking Paul McCartney. Should I say hi? Should I not say hi? Yeah, right. And then I'm like, he's alone in a hallway, like a gazelle on the Serengeti's plane. I'm going <laughs> to pounce, right? So I said, uh, I just want to say it's a great honor to meet you and looking forward to your show. And I start walking away. And he goes, no, come back. He goes, uh, what's your name? I go, Paul. He goes, oh, cool, man. What do you do? I go, stand up. I, you know, work on the show, blah, blah, blah. He goes, oh, I love stand up. I knew Richard Pryor, blah, blah, blah. He goes, you got a kid? Yeah, I got a kid. Travel a lot, right? Yeah, it's hard on the road. So five, ten minutes go by. I'm talking to Paul McCartney like I'm talking to you. Like, right, right, right. And, like, and I'm trying to be super cool. Like on the outside, I'm like, hey, man, I'm talking to Paul McCartney. But on the inside, I'm like, I'm talking to Paul McCartney. <laughs> it was like those girls at Chase Stadium. You know, I was yeah, out of yeah. my mind. And, and as I'm talking to him, I'm getting closer and closer and closer to his face because, like, I never, you know, like, I yeah. was, like, the close talker in Seinfeld. Right. Like, I was this close. Right, right, right. Like, I could have cleaned, like, ticks off his eyebrows. I was yeah. that close. And then he's, like, leaning backwards as I'm talking to him. <laughs> and then I'm, like, I got to leave this guy alone. So I go, I'm going to go now. Nice to meet you. And I go into the bathroom. I'm hyperventilating. And then I'm, like, I think Paul McCartney should do my podcast because uh -huh. I want to talk to him about music. Like that's how my stupid brain works. Right, right. So I go and I knock on the door and I say, I was dressing room door. I go, this is, would you do my podcast? He goes, yeah, sure. Just like that. Wow. Now, you know, you're like, when you're in like high school or college or whatever, like there's this really hot girl or guy and you wanted to ask him out, but you're too shy because they're way above your pay grade. And like you. Yeah, and never. You know, and yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> well, I do you fuck. But I get it. But yeah. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and but you you, you say I'm gonna ask him out anyway, but yeah. they're gonna say no, and instead right. they say yes and you don't yeah, have yeah. a plan. That yeah, was yeah. what happened. So yeah. he goes, Yeah, sure, how do we do it? And I completely froze and got like completely like I was shaking and I turned into like rain man and I was like, ah, ah, <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm like and I'm like rubbing my thigh, like I got some kind of disorder, like ah. I go, I can come to London. And he goes, we're in a room in New York together. Why would you come to London? And then he goes, is it easy to do? And I actually said to Paul McCartney, oh, yeah, it's really easy. You could do it on the phone, like naked from your toilet. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck am I saying? So, so end of story. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get out of here. I said, I'll go find your assistant and we'll, uh, set, we'll it set it up. And he goes, no, no, you and I will do it. I go, what do you mean? He goes, they're just going to make a big deal out of it and make it complicated. Let's just exchange numbers. And when I call you, you got to be ready to do it, right? Uh -huh. So now I'm handing my phone number to him, right? And I think he's like, and he gives me a phone number, but I think it's like a phone number to a Chinese restaurant, right? Uh -huh. Some bullshit. So he does the show and it was amazing. And I was working at the Daily Show at the time too. So I'm packing up my bag. It's after the late, uh, after the Colbert show taping and I'm packing up my bag and I'm late and my phone rings and I don't recognize the number. Mm -hmm. So I let it ring the voicemail. And this is the message on my phone. Paul's Paul McCartney here. Uh, I'm going to ring you back in five minutes to do the podcast thing. I got some time now. Otherwise, I'm going to run out of time. So if you're there at five minutes' time, you caught me. Wow. <laughs> so what would you do? Just on your phone or what? How would you do it? I, I call him back. I'm like, why are you bothering me? I did, <laughs> uh, I did it from a phone at The Daily Show, and, and uh, it was, like, crazy. My favorite part of that is that he felt he needed to – it, it, he needed to identify himself as Paul McCartney. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's on there. And I got, you know, comedians and actors and writers and all that stuff. And dope, uh, dope, so dope. check it out. Yeah, man. And Yo, um, plug all your stuff real quick. All right. Yeah. So uh, at Paul Mercurio on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the Paul Mercurio show. Spell and, it. Uh, M-E-C-U-R-I-O. M-E-C-U-R-I-O. Not M-E-R-C-U-R-I-O. If you put two R's in there, there's an Australian actor, different guy. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Love All right, you. All right brother. Thanks, hey, bro. Thanks, bro. Talk to you soon. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero. Hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.